So this study is the most comprehensive uh, that's been conducted to date, both in terms of its representativeness and the number of comparison groups that we've been able to employ. We also address some of the major questions that have been left begging in previous research, particularly the degree to which uh, assisted conception is related to birth defects via patient factors that underlie infertility versus treatment effects. Uh, what this study shows is we're, we're able to go further into every available treatment modality, plus we're able to simultaneously examine the effect of fresh and frozen embryo cycles. Plus we've also done something which is really quite unique in that we've identified patients who have both uh, a baby from assisted conception and a baby from spontaneous pregnancy. So we can look in, within mother, so to speak, to examine, to examine uh, patient-specific risks. The normal risk of having a birth defect in, in South Australia is 5.8% of, of, of uh, births uh, result in a birth defect, and that's recorded up to the child's fifth birthday. Now, uh, in uh, ICSI, for example, uh, in fresh cycles there, we found a birth defect rate of 9.9%, uh, which is substantially higher. IVF, uh, we're able to uh, largely discount the, the apparent increased risk, which is there in the, in the crude data. Uh, we can explain the, that excess of risk in term, uh, purely in terms of patient characteristics, maternal age and overweight and so on. However, intracytoplasmic sperm in, uh, uh, injection, the ICSI, uh, is associated with increased risk that we can't explain by the available patient characteristics that are at hand. And this seems to be now part of a, uh, a coherent pattern internationally in some of the larger studies. Further, we uh, can also identify that in a, in a small subset of patients that the home use of clomiphene citrate was associated with a, a, a substantial increased risk. Now that's a, that uh, replicates uh, a, a, a recent large study undertaken in the US at the beginning of 2011 using a registry um, database they have there. Now that's of particular importance here because clomiphene citrate is, is very commonly used as a first line treatment for anovulatory infertility. Uh, it's considered to be uh, safe, cheap and non-invasive. It's also available uh, uh, very, very widely now uh, on, the, on the web. Uh, and in Australia it operates, it sits on the PBS. Uh, and so it's a first line treatment. There are over 37,000 scripts a year written in, uh, in Australia. We found that single, em uh, single embryo transfers re resulting in a singleton baby uh, is safer than having a twin pregnancy for major birth defects. So this extends the work showing that, that multiple embryo transfer is a risk for the mother and for pregnancy loss, it actually has a conspicuous effect on the risk of birth defects. So but what we also show in this study is that the freeze-thaw cycle, far from generating any additional harm, actually helps reduce the risk even further uh, so particularly for ICSI, this, this, this treatment which seems to be associated with increased risk. So in fact, the, together, uh, we think that this can lead very, very directly to informing uh, patient choice about not just about perhaps which treatment path to go down, but then also whether they elect to have one embryo versus two embryos return. And, uh, and it should put at ease the, the, any, any concern uh, about the freeze-thaw cycle, uh, at least on the basis of the data that we have at this point. Without wishing to um, cause alarm, um, quite often people are, are, are made very acutely aware of the background risks of pregnancy, and, and indeed many of them have already experienced pregnancy loss and so on, which brings them to a clinic. Uh, I think it's important that people enter treatment with appropriate information so that they're informed, and that's a joint responsibility of the patients and the clinicians uh, to do that. For those people who wish to choose treatments, they should discuss their own medical circumstance with their clinician. So there's, I'm afraid there's not a, a very simple uh, message here um, uh, regarding which treatment to choose because it'll depend on the underlying conditions that people present with.